We begin this hour in Ukraine, where the civilian death toll is climbing. British intelligence reports show how the Russian invasion has largely stalled on all fronts. In turn, Russian military forces have launched an increasing number of airstrikes on civilian-occupied towns and cities. One attack hit a theater in Mariupol that was serving as a shelter for hundreds of women and children. Rescuers are sifting through the rubble as they search for survivors. And amid the violence, a moment of candor from President Biden on Wednesday. He called Russian President Vladimir Putin a war criminal for his military actions. In the meantime, the Pentagon has started shipping military supplies to Ukraine as part of the president's promise to provide nearly $1 billion worth of weapons to the country. CBS News' Skylar Henry has more. Russians continue their relentless assault on cities throughout Ukraine with missile, rocket and mortar fire. In the northern city of Chernihiv, police there say an artillery attack today killed civilians, including an American. CBS has not yet been able to verify that report. Meanwhile, in the southern city of Mariupol, searchers are sifting through rubble looking for survivors of another attack. This theater was said to be sheltering more than 1,000 people, and satellite images prior to the blast showed the word children painted in Russian so bombers could see it. I think he is a war criminal. President Biden called Russian President Vladimir Putin a war criminal Wednesday. The White House later said the president was speaking from his heart. Speaking from what he's seen on television, which is barbaric actions by a brutal dictator uh, through his invasion of a foreign country. The White House says President Biden will speak with China's president on Friday to discuss the war in Ukraine. The meeting comes amid reports China may be preparing to supply Russia with military equipment. Any effort to supply, to provide uh, materiel for Russia's war effort, uh, that would be met with significant costs. The Pentagon tweeted out this video of body armor and helmets being shipped to Ukraine. Senators were briefed on White House plans to ship more supplies, including drones and anti-aircraft weapons. It's clear they, they, how to, they know how to effectively use uh, the weapons that are being provided to them, and so it's incumbent on us to continue to provide those weapons. Defense officials say Russia's attacks have stalled, largely due to Ukrainian forces defending their embattled country. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb joins us now from Lviv, Ukraine for more on this. MTS, uh, I'm, I'm always interested in hearing what you're seeing on the ground in Lviv. And in particular, I'm wondering how folks there are responding to that horrific attack in Mariupol on the theater where we could so clearly see children being labeled uh, right there to try and warn Russian attacks to stay away. Lana, Carter, good to talk to you. Yeah, look, it's horror is what many people are feeling just hearing about what happened in Mariupol. Uh, we're still waiting to find out just the extent of the casualties uh, after that uh, theater was targeted in those Russian strikes. But, of course, Russian denying that they did it at all. They are accusing uh, what they described as neo-Nazis here in Ukraine. Whatever the case, uh, it's it's almost surreal being here in Lviv because it, in a way it's so far away from so much of the fighting. And that's why uh, millions of people have have fled to this part of the country and indeed around 300 have crossed over into Poland and indeed uh, into other European countries to flee the violence. But again, the people we've been speaking to have been telling us that they're watching what's going on in the rest of the country and they've they have resolved. They've decided that they too think it's time that they learn how to use weapons, that they may also start considering joining the fight. We have to remember there's a pretty large army of volunteers that are on the ground right now alongside of conventional forces here in Ukraine. In fact, just yesterday we were uh, at a training center where we met a young woman, an IT professional, who was training how to use a Kalashnikov. She said she hopes she never has to use it but that she would to defend her family and her country. Lana mm. Carter. Well, all those civilian volunteers could be making a difference. The latest defense report out of the U.K. says the Russian invasion is largely stalled on all fronts right now. Russian forces appear to have made minimal progress in recent days. So what do we know about this? 
Well, Carter, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the Russian forces and the Russian uh, generals that are leading this campaign, and certainly Vladimir Putin, was not expecting the kind of fight that they are faced. They are, they are now facing from Ukraine. They weren't expecting the kind of opposition uh, that they have been receiving, and more importantly, they weren't expecting just how how strong these forces would be. And again, remember, there's the conventional Ukrainian military, and then there are those who are trainees, people who up until a few weeks. Ago worked in offices, you know, ran, you know, car garages, were regular everyday people who have put on fatigues and are carrying weapons. But there are bigger issues here at play. I think one of the bigger issues, at least on the Russian side, uh, is one of, frankly, logistics. Their logistics seem to have been all over the place since this fighting began. Uh, they've been unable to get supplies to the front line. They've been unable to, to get the kind of things that they need on the ground uh, to, to support their troops as they try to force their way uh, into places like Kyiv. But that means uh, the reason we're seeing the, the kind of the scenes that we're seeing in places like Kharkiv uh, and indeed in Mariupol, those horrifying scenes, that's perhaps why we're seeing the kind of airstrikes and shelling uh, that we've been seeing, uh, that, uh, that, that horror that we've been seeing. I don't know if you saw one of the reports that we did earlier today where we were showing you scenes from inside of a hospital, and it really looked like it was out of a horror film. Uh, and it really just goes to show just how punishing the Russians have been in the parts of the country where they have the military might to back them. All Lana, right. Carter. And Tiaz, we are thinking of you and everybody over there and hoping you all stay safe. Thank you.